a mid-sagittal section of the human brain. Here you will find the master control switch which regulates many processes. In sexually mature females, a chemical message from the front or the anterior pituitary gland triggers the process of follicular development and the start of the menstrual cycle. In humans, the onset of puberty in females brings with it a cycle of follicular development, ovulation and preparation of the uterine lining for possible pregnancy. If pregnancy does not occur, then the rich endometrial lining of the uterus is discharged as blood and tissue. Menstruation. In this simple outline of the menstrual cycle, we consider the role of several chemical messengers or hormones, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, LH, luteinizing hormone, estrogen, and progesterone. A signal from the brain's hypothalamus, located just above the pituitary gland, stimulates the production of FSH and LH by the front portion of the pituitary gland or the anterior pituitary. These chemical messengers or hormones travel via the bloodstream to the ovary where FSH stimulates the development of several primordial follicles as they become primary follicles. These primordial follicles are present at birth, but with the onset of sexual maturity, FSH is produced and some of them begin to develop. Ultimately, just one of these follicles develops further and it begins to produce the hormone estrogen, which stimulates the proliferation or the thickening of the lining of the uterus. As the follicle develops, it is termed a graphian follicle, and its development brings with it ever-increasing levels of estrogen. And as estrogen levels rise, the thickness of the endometrium also increases. But as estrogen levels arrive at a midpoint, somewhere around day 8 in this cycle, this represents a critical point which feeds back and sends a message to the anterior pituitary gland and it shuts down the production of FSH and LH. This is an example of negative feedback. But as the follicle continues to mature, it moves toward the edge of the ovary, creating a bulge, and with this comes ever-increasing levels of estrogen. Once estrogen reaches another critical point in its concentration, now high enough, it sends another signal via the bloodstream to the anterior pituitary gland. This time, the increased concentrations triggers a positive feedback response and high levels of FSH and LH are sent into the bloodstream. It is at this point that the critical event of ovulation is triggered and the female gamete is passed out of the ovary and it makes its way via the oviduct into the fallopian tube. As the cycle proceeds, the endometrium continues to increase in its thickness and the graphian follicle is now termed a corpus luteum. Meanwhile, the egg continues its journey down the fallopian tube and the stage is now set for possible fertilization and successful implantation and development of a fertilized egg. The corpus luteum produces another chemical messenger. The hormone progesterone plays a critical role in maintaining the lining of the uterus and in also 
producing a lower level of estrogen. Once again, this lower concentration of estrogen acts as a trigger to switch off the production of FSH and LH by the anterior pituitary gland. As you can see here, the levels of FSH and LH have dropped and it corresponds to the fall in the level of estrogen. But once progesterone is maintained, the thick uterine lining continues to develop and stay in place. If fertilization does not occur, eventually the corpus luteum degenerates. At this point, day 28 of the cycle of events would be approaching. And with the fall in the level of progesterone, the lining of the uterus can no longer be maintained, and it is passed out of the body as a discharge of blood and tissue. But if fertilization occurs, then the progesterone produced by the corpus luteum gives sufficient time for the zygote, or the fertilized egg, to implant itself in the uterus. And once this occurs, then the production of another chemical messenger, the hormone HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, stimulates the corpus luteum to extend its lifespan and to continue the production of progesterone, thereby keeping the uterine endometrial lining in place. Eventually, the placenta develops, and this takes over the role of producing progesterone continuing to maintain the lining until the end of the gestation or pregnancy. Then other hormonal changes will signal the uterine contraction associated with birth.